Hello and welcome to Ada Pulse, the channel that brings you all the news and all the proposals in and around the Cardano ecosystem. Now today, we want to talk to you about MinSwap. Now, this is, this is a big and complex article. There's a lot to learn here. MinSwap is the DEX building multiple approaches to liquidity pools. This is a really big article, um, so we're going to do this in two parts. So this is part one. Uh, and this is an article by Liberline. Um, I'm Josh from ATM, and uh, let's dig into this one. MinSwap is a decentralized exchange, or DEX, project. The purpose of a DEX is to allow the exchange of pairs of tokens without permission from an authority. MinSwap aims to be the best liquidity provider in the market, integrating the best asset pool models from the entire DEX ecosystem into a single protocol. The combination of stable pool, multi-asset pool, constant product pool and dynamic pool will benefit both traders and liquidity providers. MinSwap tokens will be distributed equally without any private or venture capital investment. Min token holders can participate in governance, voting democratically on protocol changes. For each trade, a commission is charged, which goes to liquidity providers through the process known as yield farming. Any person holding tokens can provide liquidity to each pool, or we can call them LPs, according to the tokens they hold. Thus, with public participation and without permission, the decentralized format comes to life. MinSwap has pioneered several ideas in the Cardano ecosystem, such as the FISO model, short for FAIR ISO, touted as the fairest ISO model in the Cardano community. Traditionally, centralised exchanges with all the books have been backed by market makers, which are usually large trading companies or brokerage houses, with huge capital and financial knowledge and regulatory compliance. These market makers facilitate high liquidity on centralized exchanges, making profits through the trading spread. That's the price between the bid and the ask price. However, the DeFi boom for decentralized exchanges has popularized the concept of automated market maker, AMM we'll call it, which allows individual retailers to easily become market makers and profit from the trading fees. In a DEX AMM, the individual liquidity providers are the market makers. Traders can trade tokens in these liquidity pools based on deterministic algorithm. Although convenient and suitable for smart contracts, AMMs also have their own classes of problems to be solved, namely impermanent loss, low capital efficiency and front running. On the other hand, oracles are necessary tools in AMM DEXs to provide the quote of the price of a pair without consulting and having to trust an entity. Taking the information from several reliable sources off-chain, the oracles provide on-chain the necessary data for the operation. Arbitrage bots intervene to quote price of AMM at the market price according to the law of one price. So MinSwap, different approach to liquidity pools. MinSwap is designed to build different models of LPs, so that's liquidity pools. In an LP, only a couple of tokens are traded. Each LP can have only one pricing model. There could be multiple LPs for the same pair of tokens, each with a different model. Liquidity providers have the option to choose the optimized LP for a specific pair of token, which yields the highest returns capital efficiency. So at first glance, it seems that this can lead to liquidity fragmentation. However, liquidity providers will naturally direct their capital towards the most efficient pool for a specific pair because that pool is the most traded. So let's take a look at the different models to so take note. First, you have constant product pool. Constant pricing curve works well for most pairs in permanent, but incurs some loss for inverse correlated pairs. So that's pairs that are moving prices, moving in different directions. The pricing function on a constant pool is really simple. XY equals constant. Uniswap popularizes the concept of a constant product market maker. Stable pool. It is the combination of a constant product and constant sum functions with a dynamic amplification coefficient. Curve has found that there is a better function for stable pairs, i.e. pairs that are similar in price, mostly pegged to an external asset like BTC or the US dollar. Then we have multi-asset pool. It allows creating a pool with any amount of any number of assets instead of limiting the LPs to provide an equal amount of two assets. This basically means that an LP could provide their entire portfolio as it is and get it automatically rebalanced while earning fees. Balancer generalizes the concept of constant product function to more than two assets. Then we have dynamic pool. The concept is called dynamic market making or DMM, 
With DMM, the amplification factor is programmed based on a pair's inherent volatility. It also introduces a better fee mechanism where trading fee is adjusted dynamically based on trading volume and price volatility. Kyber extends Curve's amplification factor from stable pairs to other pairs in general. Automated yield farming strategy created by the communities like those of Yearn Finance will also help LPs to rebalance their capital in the most efficient LPs. By having different LPs with different pricing models to move liquidity, trading will be faster and cheaper because all pools are on a single platform. That's the MinSwap decks. Building an AMM with provision for multiple pool features will also lead to a seamless integration of best ideas from the community without having to do a hard fork or any large migrations. So let's take a look at the tokenomics. So min tokens are distributed with an allocation of 21.5% to the team and the development fund. 78.5% of the tokens will be distributed to the community, of which 70% are reserved for reward LPs, ensuring our community of users is maximally rewarded, not the speculators and insiders. The treasury will keep 6% and 2.5% be allocated for the airdrops. The way to acquire min tokens is to have participates in the FISO or participating in the protocol by having liquidity when you are operating on the mainnet or trade directly on MinSwap. There will also be an airdrop as an exception to reward incentivized testnet participants. After an initial proposal and discussion on the governance form, MinSwap decided to move forward with a public sale. The total public sale amount was 0.5% of the token supply equaling 25 million MIN tokens. 0.5 was taken from the dev fund allocation. So there's two types of token. You've got the MIN token. So these are your standard token, those received in the FISO distribution and as reward to liquidity providers who delegate their tokens to LP. Then you have the MINT tokens or MINT T. 5 million MINT will be distributed via airdrop to those who participate in the testnet. MINT will be converted into MIN tokens, providing liquidity exclusively to the MIN ADA pool. This will also generate a min X ADA token that is locked for 45 days. Min X instead of min indicates a reward multiplier, which increases the regular min ADA LP participation rewards. After 45 days, these can be redeemed for the underlying regular ADA or min token. Redeemed min tokens will be released on a 45 day linear vesting schedule. So let's take a look at their roadmap. Now, this is the roadmap they have on their website. I'm guessing COVID got in the way a little bit because this doesn't seem to look right. The most recent milestone was January the 25th, so a few days ago, the official date of the launch for the testnet in its second edition. So moving on to governance. Now, from the beginning, MinSwap will have an online user interface and a simple voting procedure for MIP. So that's MinSwap Improvement Proposal, similar to BIP, SIP or EIP. Um, being a community oriented project from the beginning, new changes will be proposed and discussed with the community through the MIP process. To mitigate concerns about the use of MinSwap's community treasury before governance is fully effective, a number of measures have been put in place, including locking funds in multi-sig wallets, public and audited smart contracts that maintain treasury funds, a transparent process when key protocol changes are made and clear and fair vesting. The first phase of MIP implementation is informal due to the technical and practical limitations. The initial informal governance system consists of a forum for community members to submit MIPs and participate in the vote. Voting on proposals is based on forum accounts and one account will be one vote. Given the lack of civil resistance in this process, proposals that exceed a predetermined vote threshold will be non-binding and will go into a proposal repository and will be first proposals to be voted on when the civil resistant instant voting takes effect. The voting order of the informal MIPs in the repository will be determined by the total number of votes received. Formal governance will occur off-chain with an instant voting system. Initially, only proposals posted on the instant voting system by the core team will be considered binding if approved by the quorum. After six months of formal government, the changes in any proposal is binding if it is approved with a quorum. At this point, proposals from the informal PIM repository that were approved during the first six months but not implemented will be put to the vote again. Major structural changes and use of the development fund wallet will be voted on by the community, whereas smaller changes that affect operations as well as min emission changes to min swap farming pairs will be decided on by the core team. Smaller operational changes shall be voted on and implemented, though they will only be binding for 90 days before being subject to change without a vote. Audit. Audits are necessary for the security of all development. Twig will perform the external security audit 
of the DEX smart contract. Now, Twig is a software innovation lab specializing in Haskell development that worked with IOHK on the architecture and design of the Cardano smart contracts Plutus platform. Twig will manually analyze your code in an attempt to locate potential problems. This will be done by applying lightweight formal methods that ensure key system components are built to specification and bugs are found and removed transparently. So as always, let's now take a look at the team. So it has three co-founders and they are Nguyen Li Vulong, Hu Fan and Richard Nguyen. And you can see the full team here. So I think it's run by NFTs looking at that. But uh, the members of the team say that they have experience working in large companies such as Amazon Web Services, GHTK and contributing to large open source projects and having received the innovation award at the NEO Hackathon in Tokyo, thus demonstrating knowledge about DeFi and blockchain. They also say that they were part of the Plutus Pioneer program. So in the second part of this article, we will explain the FISO model used for the initial distribution of tokens and Laminar, the protocol for the MinSwap DEX. Uh, so that's it for part one. Um, so look out for part two. Uh, f the full article can be found um, on the Ada Pulse website, and I'll also put a link below. I'll also put a link to uh, MinSwap down there as well, because there's lots of information on their website too. So take a look at that. Uh, do like, share, subscribe, and all the other things people say. Um, yeah, and comment below. Any questions, you know, swag zod and myself atm we're all spos um we 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 know the market so do get in contact if you've got any questions uh below and if you want to support our channel further please do delegate your ada to swag zod or atm so i'm josh from atm and that's me for now see you next time